peace, 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 peace. Welcome and welcome back to my space. Gratitude and appreciation for all energetic exchanges, inspired actions taken toward me. I appreciate them. Let's get into it. Peace on this mercurial day. Today is Wednesday, um, June 8th, 2022. All right, let's get into this daily. All right, daily intuitive message. Let's get a life hack for today. What is the life hack for today? First, we're going to see what the situation is. What is the situation? Two cards. What is the situation? There's a secret. <laughs> okay, like these messages are coming out about theft. Okay. And it's like theft through, I mean, it could be physically stealing out somebody's wallet or laundering something, hiding money in accounts or something like that. It could be that. But with the Six of Pentacles, we got the High Priestess and the Six of Pentacles. And it's like somebody's hiding, it's a secret or something that, you know, there is some money. You know how like entities get money to, and it's, the intention is to serve others with it, like that type of vibe. And, or somebody knows that this is happening, like their intuition knows that this is happening. Like, I think somebody's stealing from me or, you know, like this is unfair. There's a knowing that something's unfair as far as like allocating resources, money, all right? Four pentacles, yeah, yeah, man. There's an entity here. This is showing up as the, the vibe that's strongest is the entity that's showing up the strongest. That, that vibe is the receiving party. Like, I know. I feel like they know. Like, it's like, what is going on? Like, I know I'm supposed to receive more assistance, more support, whatever this is, authentically. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we can talk about charity, like, you know, giving to the less fortunate, but... It goes deeper than that with sharing. You know what I'm saying? Some people carry energy where, you know, when it comes to physical money or whatever, it just comes and, you know, it's for a reason. Wherever you have Scorpio, you have significant Scorpio, you are responsible for shared resources. You are, all right? And depending on what, you know, planetary energy there is there, whatever house is in, is like how you do that or whatever the situation is or how you are to receive that, okay? But Scorpio energy is shared resources, all right? And that's what I'm getting up here, all right? Because with the four of pentacles, somebody is like, um, I'm pretty much, I just got barely holding on, but things are not moving. They're not, you know, there's there's likely times, like right now it's showing, it's showing up as unfair. Like I didn't get it again. Or where is this thing, this money, this balance? Okay. We got the four of pentacles. We got the princess of pentacles upright with the dev card. Like somebody's supposed to share resources with me. Somebody's supposed to get, you know, be more intimate with me or whatever the situation is. All right. Radical change. All right, around this financial stability, practical situation. I know this, high priestess, but things are, it's a secret. Things are still hidden and it's not a sword. Somebody's, you know, a lot of mental anxiety around this. Like, listen, I focus, like, I know where I'm focusing my manifestation, three of wands. Okay, and at this time, nine of wands, I was tied, boss. All right, 
I'm going through a lot over here. Like, it's a struggle. Why is it so I'm freaking fair? Like, something's wrong here. You know what I'm saying? Because I got, a, I know I got an authentic soulmate out there because all it takes is one. What's up with it? What's up with it? All right, so let's get let's get into it. What's gonna help rectify the situation energetically? All right, so energetically for this situation for this person, what's the life hack? On the bottom, we have this sun. Right now, the sun is in Geminian. Geminian is about um, your immediate community, siblings, being ambiguous, and intellect, communications, right? Um, pettiness, you know, the tea, okay? Uh, your surroundings, right? So there's that sun illuminates, sun is empowering. So be aware of the community. But what came out is Venus, all right? attraction energy now i'm not going to say just change your vibration and you won't attract that i'm not saying that that ain't a thing i'm just saying it's over it's way over blown or however you want to put that but venus is in taurus right now and taurus is your personal finances all right your your talents being comfortable stability so you're in alignment okay you're focused on like listen all right i know my value i know my worth okay like i've been working hard like i know this like you know intuition or whatever but you know this is about value this is refinement so this is saying this is a this is you know a progressive thing because this is attracts attractive energy and this is what this person is seeking you know what i'm saying to be for someone to or something to be attracted to it to you know uh facilitate this here change around stability with finances money or whatever it is moving forward because it, it it's it's what it is the six of pentacles is in reverse like something was unfair especially with that justice in reverse like it was like a disservice um you know I pause to say, you know, because this could all be also be like, again, like I said, someone could be hiding that they're doing this, that they can't give. They don't want to give something like that, but we have Venus here. All right. So let's see what actual archetype comes out. What, what energy is Venus going to be? What archetype is Venus going to be? We do have Taurus. All right. So like I said, that is there. Let's see. So whatever you do have, value it. Of course, we feel, and for the most part at this time, it could absolutely be true that we need more, but value what you have. Venus is about value. If you're already doing that, great. Aries, okay? We have Aquarius, all right? So right now, Saturn is in Aquarius. And Saturn is duty. It is restriction. It's societal operations, you know what I'm saying? The sins of the father, it's reality. And in the archetype of Aquarius, it's very difficult because Aquarius is one of their jobs, characteristics, or whatever, is to be an individual within the collective or friendship circle or futurist, things like that. That's not so easy, okay? Especially with that Saturn energy and then you have a duty to do. So you can feel very much restricted with Saturn and Aquarius individually. Like, damn it, man, like I have to do this for the world. But at the same time, like I want to be like, I want to do what I want to do. Like, so that's a collective vibe, right? But what came out is Aries. So right now we have Mars in Aries. We have Jupiter in Aries, which collectively talks about, listen, you know, with Jupiter, it's about applying the wisdom from the experiences that were centralized around your individual self at any given time. You know what I'm saying? Well, at this time, well, well at that time when I was 19 and I was doing this, I experienced blah, blah, blah. So then I learned this, this, and that, and, you know, applying that as needed. 
in order to facilitate progression, get blessings, if you will, or whatever the situation is. Then we have Mars and Aries, which is like, literally, I'm going to do this. I'm fired up. Very passionate, very aggressive at this time, too. It could be. But we do have Aries, which is about very much individualism. And, you know, this is what I am at this time. And this is what I'm doing. Okay. So let's see what uh, area of life this is focused on. What area of life is this happening? Very much, you know, eighth house vibes here. Piscean vibes here as far as philanthropy and shared resources. All right. Seventh house even. So we have the fourth house of home. Security, history. Um... It typically, you know, relates to the, you know, mother archetype or the, you know, the more nurturing archetype of, of emotions or whatever the situation is, ebb and flow, energy, mood, energy, whatever. Security, right? Possibly some hidden things, but the seventh house did come out, all right? Partnership, like where's the authentic partner? There is something like, and I, and I said, there gotta be one and Aries is the one, seventh house largely denotes like the one partner your open enemy your open enemy you know what i'm saying meaning that you know we are opposites but we balance each other out you know what i'm saying whatever the situation is so while somebody very well may again they you know my you know this person is saying my partner you know what i'm saying because for whatever it's hitting for you know what i'm saying because we all carry certain energies like i just don't get that type of abundance, okay? But I have another type of abundance, intuition, okay? The power of the psyche, seeing beyond the veil. That's my power. That's my mission. Or that's my job to a very large degree. So my partner is to balance me out in that way. And then, you know, maybe they struggle with intuition. And that's, you know, whatever the situation is. So let's get into it spiritually, what you can do to continue or to start facilitating this situation spiritually. Cherish your willpower diplomatically, all right? Cherish your willpower diplomatically, mentally. Enjoy what you think you know about relationships. Enjoy what you think you know about relationships. Physically, charm, art and beauty are the way to do it on your own and get a fair fair deal. Now this feels like keep your vibration high and not necessarily so you can attract what you want to attract, but more so that when you do attract what you attract because we're going to attract what we attract period. But you, more so that you can react and respond in a more progressive way because of course if you're in a lower negative vibe, your reactions and your responses are typically going to be different. And it's not necessarily that you're going to attract something different because we're attracting things all day. But say somebody does come smiling in your face and you're bitter because, you know, your bill ain't get paid. But meanwhile, if you would have just said hi, that could have turned into a whole different situation. And that's where, you know, I say it kind of, you know, skeeves me out a bit about that whole just you know, change your vibration. Maybe a lot of people, that is what they mean, but a lot of people, uh, most other people, that isn't what they mean. Just like, like, listen, I'm not all the high vibe tribe all the time. Like, you know, love and light, that's toxic too, all right? Reality. I'm a very heavy Saturn dominant person, okay? So, you know, it's natural for me, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, when it comes to outcomes and getting what you deserve when it's time, spiritually, the attraction of energies to meet the challenge of balance. How perfect is this? Spiritually, spiritually, it's not demon world yet. Spiritually, the attraction of energies to meet the challenge of balance. The challenge of balance, this is a challenge, all right? Mentally, pleasure from your desires regarding cooperation. Mentally, this is what you're going to receive. Pleasure from your desires regarding cooperation. And then physically, good times resulting from the honesty and strength 
of your partner or partners with the S and apostrophe. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So let's get it. So be aware. At this message is saying when it comes to attraction energy, all right, we just came out of Venus and Aries not too long ago. So that vibe is still out here of being attracted to strong individualism regardless, okay? We have crown chakra. Fertility, divine masculine, and passion, okay? Soul time is soul time, all right? And that's a foundation backed by the omnipresent God. And even when I say the omnipresent God, I don't mean the omnipresent. I just, listen, I got my whole, own little language in my head. But anyway, all right, very powerful foundation here. Emperor vibes. Regardless, you know what I'm saying? Taking the action to be appreciative of what you have thus far. And, you know, that is, you know, although, you know, this, there is some unfairness here. It really is. But always, what can you do but focus on, on self in those instances? I mean, as always, but it's how you do it or what you're doing, right? So we have Merkaba, movement, change, right? Soul time. The frequency of soul time. This is the freak. This is the, this is how we vibing. The frequency of soul time asks us to allow the possibility of a new reality to emerge. One that embraces the concept that while the corporeal body is mortal, the soul is timeless, limitless, and infinite. We're operating and it's not even going to be, we, we technically won't even be able to call it manifestation anymore. That's really like a term that's being aged out in this age, I mean, phased out in this age because humanity is dead, obviously, right? So we are the last of the dying breed, authentically so. Time, you know, things change and, you know, welcome to the future presently. But anyway, that is what I have for you at this time. I do appreciate you, and I'll see you next time. Peace.